I wanted to show you some pretty cool footage of Navigate on Autopilot in version 10, 32.11. This is a nine mile section of Raleigh's outer belt line that I drive during the tail end of rush hour several times per week. It's a nice test of Navigate on Autopilot because it usually has a lot of traffic, but it's not stop and go traffic like it would be a bit earlier in the day. I'm initiating Navigate on Autopilot on the on-ramp to I-540 <coughs> towards Durham coming off US-1 southbound. Autopilot already knows that the speed limit will be 70 miles per hour on I-540, so it automatically makes that the maximum set speed. However, it takes the on-ramp at a very comfortable 55 miles per hour, which is exactly my experience on version 9. Big improvement number one is this lane change right here. On version 9, Autopilot would turn on the turn signal and show that it was going to change lanes, but it wouldn't complete the lane change before it ran out of room even when there are no other cars anywhere near me. Version 10 has no problem getting out of this acceleration lane in plenty of time, even in traffic. In fact, it smoothly transitions from this great lane change to the very next lane change out of yet another acceleration lane. Know that traffic behind me is pretty densely packed even though you can't see the cars showing on the screen. Changing lanes required autopilot to pull in front of a car that was closer to me than the one directly behind me. And it didn't even balk at that. The auto lane change was super smooth once again, showing that version 10 can now handle merging out of not just one, but two acceleration lanes that gave autopilot trouble for me in version nine. As you just saw, it then made yet another lane change based upon the speed of the cars in front of me. A quick summary for those unfamiliar with Tesla's Navigate on Autopilot feature. On certain roads and interchanges, Autopilot will make all the necessary lane changes and even pass slower vehicles all on its own. You need to keep your hand on the wheel for safety and if it doesn't sense it there, it won't make any of the lane changes and will even eventually shut down. I keep my left hand at around 1030 on the steering wheel and pretty much just relax it there. The weight of my arm creates just enough enough torque on the wheel to let autopilot know it's there without so much torque it kicks it out of auto steer. You can't really see it in frame for most of this video, but you can see how I drive on autopilot in any of a number of other videos on my channel. My hand never leaves the wheel and I never get nagged by autopilot. Navigate on autopilot has a few settings. I have speed-based lane changes set to average with no required lane change confirmation. This means that autopilot will initiate and complete lane changes without any confirmation needed for me at all whenever it thinks I need to be in a different lane based upon navigational needs or to pass slower moving traffic. It vibrates the steering wheel and pleasantly bings so I know that a lane change has been initiated, but other than ensuring I have enough torque on the wheel so autopilot knows my hand is there, I'm not doing a thing. The car is driving itself. It's making these decisions itself and executing them itself. This is truly autonomous driving even though I am fully monitoring everything ready to take over at an instant. With version 10, it seems that the lane changes are a bit more predictive now based upon your speed relative to the car you're trying to get around. Watch the color of the dotted lane on the screen start out as red, then turn blue. This shows how the turn signal will activate before you have enough room for autopilot to make the lane change, but the lane change will be executed exactly when you have enough room to do it. That's an increase in efficiency from what I've experienced in version 9, where it would often take way too long to initiate a lane change even after it was safe to do so. With my speed-based lane changes set to average, version 10 is still approaching slower traffic close enough to need to slow down itself before making a lane change. However, the transition from your set speed to slower speed back to your set speed is much less dramatic than I've often experienced with version 9. Version 10 brings some big changes to the screen animations. I uploaded this video in 4K so you can zoom in if you need to in order to see the details on the info screen. On multi-lane highways like this one, the animation shows as many as five lanes across. It might even be able to show more, but I don't have anywhere I can easily test this. Lines that are dotted on the highway are now dotted in the animation. Solid lines remain solid, and double lines will also now show as double lines even though there aren't any on this highway to show you. The nice thing about this is that you can see that autopilot understands what lanes are available to you and where the boundaries of the road are. It now has different animations for vans, SUVs, and pickup trucks, so it can't have trouble keeping this straight. It's not a big deal because autopilot doesn't really care what kinds of vehicles surround you. It just needs to know where they are, how big they are, and where they're going. 
The next couple of miles required no lane changes after this one and were peacefully uneventful. You can watch the full drive, which I left so people who were interested could see that I never dropped out of autopilot the entire drive. Or you could scrub ahead to eight minutes and five seconds to catch how autopilot handled my exit. I suggest you do to see why it gave me a bit of a pucker factor, even though everything was done perfectly safely. I'm a planner, so I usually get into the off-ramp lane well before my off-ramp appears to prevent traffic from cutting me off when I need to exit. I would already be in the rightmost lane here if I were driving, but Navigate on Autopilot still has me in the middle lane. I was blown away at how smoothly it slowed to allow the pickup next to me to get ahead so I could safely change into its lane. Even though I didn't think it would make it in time, Autopilot seemed to know exactly how much margin it had to get over in time for the exit, and sure enough, it took the exit with zero drama. In short, I'm blown away with Navigate on Autopilot so far on version 10. This whole drive was as comfortable as if I made all the lane changes myself, which is a big improvement from how version 9 handled this same stretch of road. If you're looking to get a Tesla and try its Navigate on Autopilot for yourself, be sure to use my referral code when you place your order to get free supercharging. It's linked in the video description and pinned in the comments. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech, and I hope to see you next time.